Hello friends. Oh, well, somebody asked a really good question that I wanted to attend to today. And their question was, what do we do about fear of nature? And I'm also going to talk about fear of the dark in this video. Because when people come out to Rewild University for the Forest Monk program, not everybody, but a lot of people have a fear of nature. Now we don't have any big predators here that are going to hurt anybody, but we do have big predators that people are scared of. Wolves, gray wolves, and black bears. And it's, you know, the black bears once in a while nibble on somebody. <laughs> and it's very unpredictable when they do attack. Now, one of our forest monks last year was bluff charged by one of the black bears where they run towards you full speed and then they veer off to the side. So there's experiences out in nature that can be fearful, but most of the fear comes from unfamiliarity and from some cultural conditioning. And I can understand this fear. When I went, when I was 17 and I went out for three months uh, at the Teaching Drum Wilderness School and lived in the woods, I was pretty scared of the dark. By the end of my time there, literally the woods at night became the place where I feel safest in the world. And that holds to this day. There is a huge feeling of safety and comfort in the dark woods, even the pitch dark woods. Now to enact that transformation, there are a couple things that I had to do. And I'd like to share them with you today. And hopefully, if you have a fear of the forest or nature in general, this can be fear of swimming in the ocean, fear of the dark. This will help you get through it and transform it. Here's the thing. Most of the fear comes from a lack of familiarity. So to become familiar with an environment, we start to learn about it. There's all kinds of night sounds, for instance, in the woods. As we get to know those night sounds and we can identify, oh, that's, that's an owl and that's a tree frog, that's a distant loon, those sounds become friends instead of scary, strange, I mean, some of the owls we have up here sound like people screaming in the woods. You can hear that and it will send your heart up through your throat if you're not familiar with it. If you are, then, oh, there we go, that's a screech owl. Becoming familiar, you can do it through, boy, I used to have a recording of the night sounds from our ecosystem that I got from a local um, kind of nature museum. So you might find something like that or going out with somebody who's familiar with the night sounds. Now, there's also other night sounds that can be sometimes even more frightening and that's when creatures are walking through the woods. To get familiar with those, what I advise is getting a nice flashlight that's pretty powerful and walking out through the woods. I'm hearing a sound and crunch, crunch, crunch over there and listening to it. Don't just shine that flashlight right away. Take some time to really listen to that sound. What does it sound like? Then shine your light and see what is making that noise. Up here, the majority of the time, it's going to be a deer or it's going to be some other animal, you know, a raccoon. Maybe you'd get lucky and see a fox or a coyote. And then you're going to be able to mark in your mind, oh, that's the kind of sound pattern that equates with that animal. Another technique that I've used with people is to realize that you are a big, powerful predator. We humans tend to think of ourselves as really soft and weak 
and defenseless. And what that means is that we start to react and act in fear. If we see an aggressive dog, the scared part of us wants to just turn and run away. Now that kind of uh, enacts the predator instinct in that dog, and that's often when people get bit. So the key here is to start to realize that you have an inner beast in you. <laughs> and one of the things that really worked for me when I was out for that three months was when I would hear something, I would feel my inner beast come out and I would think, oh, if something comes up to me, it's not gonna eat me, I'm going to eat it. That switches something inside of us. It doesn't have to be aggressive because aggression often is gonna come out of fear. It's more of an excitement, an adrenaline. Like, come on, I'm ready to get you. And that puts us into not a fear-based reaction, but more of an alert, aware-based reaction to those strange sounds coming at us through the night. I'll share a quick funny story. Well, at least I think it was funny. That whole three months I slept outside, never once, well, <laughs> once, did I sleep inside. And the rest of the group, there was a house and sometimes they would sleep in that house. And because I refused to, one night I was out sleeping by the house and they were all in the house. And I heard something coming through the woods. And I had a little knife with me, a little bushcraft knife. And I got up out of my little cotton sleeping bag. I had the crappiest gear in the world. And, and I just waited for it. And it was just light enough that I could see something coming through the brush and starting to part the leaves and the twigs. And then it stepped out into the clearing where I was. And what I saw was a little black animal with a white stripe down its back. And I wimped out and I went inside because I did not want to smell like skunk for that <laughs> for everybody else. <laughs> so the one animal that scared me too much and made me go inside was a skunk. Now these days I'm not so fearful of skunks and I know more about them, but back then that was enough to scare me inside. I think if it had been a bear or a coyote, I would have had a uh, different experience and it would have been more exciting, but skunk was too much. So two tools there. The first one is that gaining familiarity. Do that with somebody that knows the environment or else try to educate yourself about the different sounds in your environment. And then spend some time going out and trying to ID those sounds. As we develop nature literacy, we become less fearful of everything out there. The second is to access your inner beast. This, I used to actually have a meditation that I did with people where you would close your eyes and go to kind of a, a nature sanctuary in your head and you'd meet different aspects of yourself. And one of them that would come up would be your inner beast. And this is not beast in the sense of uh, the, the kind of hyper aggressive, uh, acknowledging that inner beast, that inner beast is, is a power place inside of you. A creature that is not filled with fear, that is not prey, but is part of a long line of being basically the apex predator on the planet. You, that's, that's our heritage. We've been hunter-gatherers for a long, long time, and we've made it through <laughs> hunting mammoths with stone tools if you can imagine that and living alongside bears that dwarf modern grizzlies saber-toothed cats creatures way bigger and more powerful and scary than anything we have today so that's your ancestry you have that that beast inside of you and it's not afraid of the night and it's not afraid of the forest okay my friends I hope you found this helpful in some way. And do share with me, do you have a fear of the night or of nature? 
how have you overcome it? And if you use any of these techniques, share with me in a week or a month from now the difference that it's made in your life. Don't forget to check out our podcast. It's at rewildu.com slash unleash your life. Well, if you just go to rewildu.com, you'll find the Unleash Your Life podcast. And thank you to all of you who have been so supportive through Patreon and PayPal of late and buying our online courses. It really helps us to keep this channel going. All right. Love to you all. Thank you.